Jones, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Julie Summers, Jim McMullen, John McLeam, special guest star Andrew Prime. Tonight's episode, Dark Homecoming. Well, well, well. What are you doing in here? Sorry, I didn't mean to ruffle Miss Songbird's feathers. Look, Kathy, I don't think we have anything to say to each other. Well, maybe you don't, but I sure do. I saw you out there. What are you talking about? Cliff, I saw the way you were singing to him out there. It's not going to do you any good. I think Cliff is old enough to speak for himself. I mean, I don't know how things stand between you two, but... Well, we're going to be married. That's how things stand. And I don't intend to let the ex, Mrs. Baxter, change it. You understand me? Look, uh, Kathy, uh, like I said, that's up to Cliff to decide. Now, if you don't mind, I have Wait to... Wait a minute. You don't get off that easy. Look, Kathy. Yeah, I asked you to leave nicely. Now, get out. Don't touch me. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Ruby, will you hurry up? They're taking the room apart out there. Splash some water on her face and get her out of here. Ruby, we've got trouble. Yeah, well, she started it coming in here and picking a fight. She even came at me with the scissors. Ruby, she's dead. Dead? She can't be dead. Kathy, Kathy! You must have hit her pretty hard. No. No. We're in a mess of trouble here. Shine, there's got to be something we can do. It's too late for that now, Ruby. Don't you understand? She's dead. You better get out of here, Ruby, before they riot. She's coming. I can't go out there. You've got to. Now, listen to me. 
It's no good you getting mixed up in this. You let me take care of it. I didn't mean to hurt her. I know, I know. Now look at me. Look at me. You're going to go out there, and you're going to let old Shine take care of this. Now I'll handle it. Come on. Come on. Killing me. No, a scratch. Come on, we gotta get you out of here. What are you doing, Shine? Come on, out you go. Oh, Shine, leave me alone. A little fresh air, make you a new girl. Now come on, come on. That's it. Wait till I get my hands on that booby. Am I gonna fix her wagon? Take it easy. You got off lucky. Lucky? She could have killed me. I told Ruby she did. You what? Ruby thinks she killed you. <laughs> she really does. Now, you wanted revenge. Just uh, think what that's gonna do to her. <sighs> oh, what happens when she sees me? No reason she has to see you. Not for a while, at least. I can put you up in L.A. You always wanted to live in the big city. Yeah, I'd leave her an open field with Cliff. Not on your life. Look, she's already got it. Ruby came back this time to stay. But if she thinks she killed you, I can scare her into going back on the road with me. Now, what happens when she finds out we fooled her? Who knows? By that time, Ruby and I might even be married. Anyway, I'll have what I want, and you can have what you want. You've been after me for a long time about a career. Now I can connect you with the right people, change your name, get your top vocal coach. With luck, you might even be bigger than Ruby one day. You're slick, Shy. Too slick for me. You'd end up tricking me the same way you're trying to trick Ruby right now. I don't trust you, Shy. Take me back. I can't do that. Not after what I told Ruby. Take me back or I'll walk back. Kathy, you're going to Los Angeles. And a pup's gonna have kittens. Goodbye, Sean.
Mr. Hopkins, did Kathy ever take off like this before? Not this long. Not without telling me, anyway. What did the sheriff say? Well, I guess I better tell it to you straight, Mr. Jones. Kathy is somewhat of a, of a reputation around here. George said he'd look into it, but I know you, you pretty well figure she'll show up on her own. But you don't think so? I pray she will. She didn't take a car, didn't pack her bags. It's not like Kathy. The one thing she's particular about, that's your clothes. Sold out my set. Yeah, the joint was jammed, spilling out into the street. It was fantastic. Ruby's never been better. No, we're in Porter City right now. Ruby's old hometown. We're just passing through. John, can't you call him back? Um, I'll call you back, Will. Yeah. Hey. Hey, now, you just relax. We're gonna be back on the road in a couple of days and everything's gonna be fine. Ruby, Cliff's here. What does Baxter want? Something about property. I may tell him I'll talk to him on the patio. Right. Ruby, why don't you let me handle this? No, I can handle it. Cliff? Hello? Freddy! Hey, we've been expecting your call. You're looking great. Looking mighty good yourself, Ruby. Freddy, you're my main man. I had you penciled in all along. You shouldn't worry. Shine, can you please take that inside? Uh, hold on a minute, Freddy. Thanks. I never had a chance to thank you for the flowers. Good to have you back again, Ruby. Plan on staying a while this time? No, Shine's firming up the schedule right now. Uh, well, I sold the rest of the yearlings and figure we might have a favorite at Rio Dosa this year. Cliff, that's nice. I'm really glad for you. The horses are still half yours, you know. That's what I came to talk to you about. Uh, you never did return the settlement papers and we got an offer on the river frontage. Oh, well, go ahead, sell it. I won't give you any trouble. Well, I can't sell it until I get you to sign the papers. I need your autograph. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I still have the uh, plans for the summer house we're going to build there. Listen, I don't have to sell it, you know. I can... Look, I'll, I'll see that you get the papers this afternoon. Ruby, what is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I guess it's just coming home blues or something. Seems like everything here happened a hundred years ago. No, it was eight months ago. Eight months, one week, three days. And I'm the guy who can never remember our wedding anniversary. I guess a divorce is easier to remember. I figured you were happier now. I read about you all the time in the magazines. You're a big star. Oh, yeah, a big star. How about you, Cliff? How's, how's it been with you? Oh, same old waiting game, you know. Wait for the mares to fall, the kids to fill out, and then there's the auctions. Mainly, I wait for a woman to come to her senses. Last, last night, there's something. Uh, look, I hate to interrupt, but I've still got Freddy on the other line. He wants to know, is Yuma set for Friday night? Uh, no, no, tell him I've got to think about it and we'll let him know later. Listen, you, you guys are busy. I'll talk to you later, Ruby. 
What's the matter with you, Ruby? We've got to get out of here. I told you, I've got to think about it. He was here a minute ago. Here he is, over by the gelding. Thanks. Ah. Well, muscle chest. Looks like a winner. Sounds like you know your horses. I like his haunches. Looks like he can get out of a starting gate. That's important at 400 yards. You a buyer? No, I'm a private investigator. Barnaby Jones. Mr. Baxter, uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, Kathy Lou Hopkins. Your father hired me. How'd you know I was out of here? Well, I uh, went by your place, and uh, I saw your stables and your short track out back. And I uh, read about the sale and put two and two together, and it came out quarter horse. Well, that's a sample of your work. You ought to find her in no time. And you're not worried about her? She's a free spirit. She'll turn up. You didn't go looking for her the other night at the Silver Spur when she disappeared? I figured she went home with somebody else, probably Wayne Gibson. Wayne Gibson? Who's he? Well, he's an old boyfriend of hers. He was there, and from the looks he was giving me, I figured he wasn't too happy. Did he have a reason? Me and Kathy? No, not hardly. That's not the word around town. Well, it's a small town, Mr. Jones. People jump to conclusions. There's nothing serious between us. Red, this is the one I want. You can make out a bill of sale. I'm sorry, he's sold. Sold? Yeah, not more than five minutes ago. Cliff, he's yours. I missed your birthday, so many happy returns. Well, that was real sweet of you, Ruby. Uh, this is Mr. Jones, Ruby Deems. This is an unexpected pleasure, Miss Deems. I'm a big fan of yours. Well, thank you. Mr. Jones is a private investigator. He's here looking for Kathy. I uh, imagine Dwight's getting a little nervous. I didn't know she was missing. Oh, yes, she's been missing for four days. Uh, did you know Kathy? Oh, well, everybody knows Kathy, but uh, I'm afraid I haven't seen her. Well, Cliff, I uh, better be going now. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Jones. Thanks again, Ruby. Quite a woman. Quite a present from an ex-wife. Most divorces I know about, all the husband gets is a horse laugh. You got the whole horse. I can see you did your homework. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of Miss Deems, and uh, I'm sorry to hear about the two of you breaking up. It's all right. It's just a case of Ruby wanting a career, me wanting a full-time wife. If you're wondering, Mr. Jones, it had nothing to do with me and Kathy. Well, I was wondering, but uh, that's part of my job. 
And I guess I better get the rest of it attended to. Thank you, Mr. Baxter. It's all right. Shine, where's Kathy? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. Where is she? Why don't you try Cliff Baxter? I already checked his place. There's no sign of her. Now, look, the other night when we were all at the club, I went outside for a cigarette right in the middle of Ruby's last set. I saw you sneaking off with Kathy. Oh, you did, huh? Yes, I did. Wayne, everyone knows that my only interest is in Ruby. Kathy and I just went off to have a business meeting. Oh, business, huh? So I'm going to tell you something. Nobody's seen her for five days. Now I hear there's a private detective down here looking for her. So you either tell me where I can find Catherine, I'm going to go right to the sheriff. Shine, can I speak to you before you go? Yeah, just a minute, Ruby. Of course, maybe the one I ought to be talking to is Ruby. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, um, I didn't want this to get around, but there was some trouble that night. What kind of trouble? <sighs> Kathy and Ruby had words over Cliff Baxter. They got into a fight. Now, Kathy's staying in L.A. with some friends. We figured it'd be better for everyone all around if she just kind of kept out of sight until Ruby left town, just in case there were some reporters nosing around for a story. What's the phone number? I want to talk to her. I'll save you some time. Ruby and I are leaving tomorrow. Kathy's coming back tonight. You see, I promised Kathy some money for her trouble. You wouldn't lie to me. What for? Look, I'll call you when she comes in. Are you still working at the vet's office? Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be there around 9 o'clock. Well, fine, I'll call you. Okay. Can I throw you her a glass of cold milk? Fresh out. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. But I'm the culprit. <laughs> I just polished off the last carton. <laughs> Not much culprit here, so the boss says I can have all I can drink. Just so long as I don't moo at the customers. <laughs> can I get you something else? No, thanks. What I really want is some information. What about? Were you working the night of uh, Ruby Deem's homecoming? That was a big night. Wouldn't have missed it. She always plays here when she's in town, because this is where she started. Just listen to that sweet voice. Mm. Ruby never lost touch. You know, she may be a star and all that, but she's never forgot her home folk. She's as plain as hash browns. Do you know Kathy Lou Hopkins? Sure. We were drum majorettes together. Was she here that night? Oh, yeah, but I didn't wait on her table. Pity, that Cliff Baxter, ooh, he's something else. <laughs> Do you happen to recall when she left the table that night? Oh, Kathy's Nancy. She's always moving. She zipped out right after Ruby's first set. You know where she went? Backstage. Make a phone call, I guess. Could I take a look? Sure. Come on. See, here's the phone. Oh, we got to keep that locked. Souvenir hunters would take the paint right off the wall. You think Kathy may have left the club by this door that night? Well, she could have. I never did see her come back to the table. How about Wayne Gibson? Yeah, how about that, Wayne? Cute, huh? Kathy has all the luck. Did you notice when he left the club? He left by himself, right after Kathy, as a matter of fact. Well, thank you, young lady. You've been a big help. <laughs> hey, next time you're in, we'll have milk. I'll see to it. <laughs> What's the deal? How come we're meeting here at Baxter's place? You know, Kathy, she's got her mind set on seeing Cliff before she does anything else. Where is Kathy? She's out back. All right, let's go. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think that's really stupid, Kathy, coming over here, because Cliff Baxter doesn't care anything about her. I'm glad we agree. The last thing I want is more trouble between her and Ruby. Now, look, I'd like to get her out of here before Ruby and Cliff come back to the club. Well, don't worry. I'm taking Kathy with me this time. Fine. Kathy? Hey, Kathy. There you are. I got home around midnight, maybe a little later. Uh, Ruby and I stopped off for a drink after our last show. Corner puts him dead at just about that time. Hey, George, you know I didn't kill Wayne. Could this be Wayne Gibson? That's right, you know him? Oh, what I've seen him. He was in the house the other day when I came out to see Mr. Baxter. He scooted off in such a hurry I couldn't get to talk to him. Cliff, you want to tell me what he was hanging around here for? I'm afraid Wayne's the only one that could answer that. Well, you can bet that Kathy Hopkins was involved. Everybody knows that he was carrying a burn about you two. Now, there was no reason. That's what you say, but that doesn't explain how he wound up dead all of a sudden. You know, Cliff, you want to tell me about it up front. If you two had a fight and he wound up off that balcony, it could be self-defense. Yeah, I already told you I didn't even see Wayne till I found him here this morning. You know, it seems strange. What's that? Well, if it happened the way you say, that Baxter and Gibson had a tussle and Gibson took a header over the balcony, why would Baxter leave him lying there for anybody to find? Thank you, Mr. Jones. Well, now, wait a minute. Cliff admits he was drinking last night. Ruby and I had a few drinks, that's all. Well, you can be sure of one thing. When there's a missing girl involved, alcohol and perfume don't mix. Isn't that right, Mr. Jones? Well, that's a pretty good theory, Sheriff, but uh, I learned a long time ago not to jump to conclusions. It could be dangerous. You could break a foot, especially if you got one stuck in your mouth. <laughs> all right, Cliff, I'm not going to run you in. But you stick around, OK? Sure, George. See you guys. Dean? Jones. Hello. I, uh, I don't believe you know my manager, Shine Stanfield. Hello, Mr. Jones. Well, you I understand that your end of the business is sometimes as important as a good voice. Yes. I couldn't do without Shine. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I just wanted to ask you a few questions, Miss Deems. Do you recall seeing uh, Kathy Lou Hopkins backstage the night of your homecoming? No. Should I have? Well, the waitress told me that she might have gone back to make a phone call, and I thought maybe... I saw her. She came backstage, but she didn't make a call. She went right out the back door. I wonder why. Ducking out on Cliff Baxter, I'd imagine. That seems strange. I understood that she was uh, stuck on him. Well, Cliff Baxter isn't her only beau. Wouldn't be the first time Kathy played one against the other. Well, if you're referring to Wayne Gibson, I don't think he'll be giving us any information. Yeah, we got a call about him earlier. That uh, looks kind of bad for Cliff. Miss Deems, uh, you were out with Cliff last night. Had he been drinking? Yes. Yes, but he wasn't drunk. And he didn't kill Wayne, Mr. Jones. The way I read things between you two, I don't think he did either. Is that detective analysis, Mr. Jones? Oh, just Cracker Barrel logic. Kathy's been missing five days now. It seems to me if Cliff had been upset enough to kill somebody over her, he would have bristled when she walked out on him. I never thought of it quite that way. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, but we got to get packing here. We got a date in Tucson tomorrow. Ruby? Yes, we better. Sorry, I didn't mean to hold you up. Uh, Miss Deems, don't worry too much about what happened around here the last few days. Uh, we'll have the answer shortly. You have a lead, then? You might say. If Baxter didn't kill Wayne Gibson, it was the act of a person in panic, and that always leaves a trail. Couldn't it have been an accident? Hardly. There was a struggle on Baxter's veranda, and when we find out who Gibson was struggling with, we may have a lot of answers. 
Is that more cracker barrel logic, Mr. Jones? Plus a pinch of instinct. Have a good trip. I shouldn't let you do this, Mr. Jones. Well, if nobody ever took a chance, nothing ever get done. We really better go now. Well, I'm uh, finished anyway. Thanks, Billy. You've helped me a lot. You're welcome. Oh, just a minute. Hey, what's going on out there? It's you, Mr. Jones. What is this, some kind of a deadbeat alarm system so people can't walk out without paying their checks? You guessed it. Is it always on? During business hours. Did it ring the night of Ruby's homecoming? No. Thanks. Two on three, five, 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 six, seven, nine, three. What are we doing? Hi, Betty. Barnaby, I'd just about given up hope of ever hearing your voice again. How are things going? Well, if you like the sound of my voice, we got a real sweet voice up here. Uh, Ruby Deems, you know her? Oh, no of her. Fantastic country and western. If you ever want to meet her, I got an inside track. Oh, would I? All right, Barnaby, what do you need? My comparison microscope, some slides, a small bottle of nail lacquer, a bottle of alcohol ether mix, some Canada balsam, and your own sweet smile. <laughs> well, if traffic isn't too heavy, I'll, uh, I'll be there in about an hour. I'll be at the Dwight Hopkins Farm, Route 70, on the west side of town. All right, I'll be there. Bye. The hair on the left is one that I took out of Kathy's hairbrush. You see how thin the root is, as if it had come out naturally? The one on the right is one I took off the window in the dressing room. You see how fat the root is, sort of bulbous, as though it had been pulled out? Look identical to me in every characteristic. Except the root. 
I believe that the hair I took off the window in the dressing room is Kathy's, just as these prints that I took off for a mirror are identical with the prints that I took off the window in the dressing room. Well, then Kathy was in the dressing room the night of Ruby's homecoming. I think there's very little doubt of that. The question is, why did Shine and Ruby go to such great lengths to lie about it? They can't very well deny evidence like this. Mm -hmm. Depends on what they're trying to hide. These prints from the window had a little blood on them. Think Kathy's dead? I think they're the only ones who can tell us. I think we ought to go pay him a visit. We were so happy that... Hey, Ruby, what's the matter? I'm leaving, Cliff. This evening. Hey, come on. Now, last night, we both decided we were going to give it another chance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we'll have to forget about last night. Is it anything to do with Wayne, or you think something's going on between me and Kathy? No. It has nothing to do with you. I love you. Seeing you again has made me know just how much, but there's nothing I can do. Look, Ruby, I'm not going to let you walk out of my life again. I have to go. Not without a better explanation than that. Look, we might not get another chance again. Come on, what is it? Nothing could be so terrible. Oh, it is. It is. Please, just, just let me go. Oh, hi. Uh, Miss Deem's aunt said I might find Ruby here. It'll just take a few minutes. Uh, oh, this is my daughter-in-law, Betty Jones. Hello. Yeah, she's here. Come on in. Thank you. Ruby, you remember Mr. Jones? Miss Deems? This is my daughter-in-law, Betty Jones. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Deems. Nice meeting you. How are you, Mr. Jones? Just fine. Uh, Miss Deems, are you aware that Kathy Hopkins was in your dressing room the night she disappeared. I don't understand. I told you. I know, but before you tell me again, I think that you ought to know that I have proof that she was there. Ruby, what is it? She was there, wasn't she? Yes. Why don't you tell us exactly what happened? Kathy came backstage during my change. She was angry about Cliff and me, and I asked her to leave, but she wouldn't. And suddenly we were fighting, and, and I, I hit her. I hit her. She had the scissors. I hit her with a bottle and I killed her. Ruby, you don't have to say any more. Now we get a lawyer. Now, Mr. Baxter, I'm not a policeman. No, 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 Cliff, please. I want it out. I want, I want it out. Oh, thank God it's over. Not quite, Miss Deems. What did you do with the body? It's in the old Sawhill pond. You put it there? Ye yes. You lifted up her body and took it through the window, put it in the car? Yes, yes. And I understand that uh, when you came back on stage, you had changed your costume. Now, where did you get the time to do all of that? Uh, uh, I, I, I can't lie anymore. I can't shine. He did it for me, but he only did it to protect me. It was very good of Shine, very loyal. Was he there that whole time? No. No. No, he... He came in after I hit Kathy. How did you know she was dead? She, she just lay there. She, and then Shine came in and he checked her and he told me. I, I don't see. It's all right, Ruby. These are latent fingerprints of Kathy's that I removed from the window in your dressing room. 
Little blood on them, probably from when you hit her. What? What are you talking about? Dead people don't leave fingerprints. Kathy was alive when she went through the window. They're hers. I checked. I I don't understand. You, you mean I didn't kill Kathy? Not in your dressing room, you didn't. You mean Kathy's still alive? She's still alive? I wish I could believe that. Mr. Baxter, do you have any grappling gear? Yeah, there's a grappling hook out in the stable. What is it? Give me 15 minutes head start and call a sheriff. Tell him to meet me at the Saw Hill Pond. I want still around here. When I find Kathy's body, I'll have the evidence that she didn't die from a blow on the head, that Ruby didn't kill her. That's why you followed me, isn't it? and you better bring out a crew. I think they'll find Kathy Hopkins' body in there. I don't think that there's really too much to worry about here, Cliff. There'll have to be a hearing. But uh, in my opinion, the only thing that Ruby is guilty of is bad judgment. What about Shine? He's already confessed to the two murders, and I think that'll satisfy the state. I'm so sorry, Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Jones told me the whole story. I don't blame you, Ruby. I guess the problem is I blame myself. If I hadn't trusted Shine... Nothing wrong with accepting your share of the blame, as long as you don't give yourself a life sentence. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mind if I go with her, George? No, not if she doesn't. Thank you. 